I think we look good. Well, at least you look good. Thanks. That's all that matters. As long as she looks good. Literally before you walked in, I was like, look, if any camera goes out, make sure that it's mine and not yours. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to freehand my camera. Thank you. So that way I can see if anything happens. You were I can too let kind. You know. Well, I got to make sure the, the movie star looks good. <laughs> Thank you, Frankie. Are you, do you consider yourself a movie star? You know, I, I, I guess... I guess I am. Here's the problem is you're so <laughs> humble that you'll never be like, yes, I'm a movie star. I, I'm a celebrity. It's a really cool thing to say, a movie star. So yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay, so I'm gonna call you movie star the entire interview. You ready? <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. We're rolling. We're good. <laughs> All right. All right, Frankie P here and I'm with, you know what? I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna call it right now. It might upset some other people, but it's, it's the truth. My favorite Famous person, <laughs> my favorite movie star, Sophia Carson. I mean, we go way back. We we're looking at so like throwback way pictures. Back. Like babies, 2016. We're, you know what trend we should do? The one where it's like teenage dirtbag and people are showing their old pictures from when they were like teenagers. You gotta show me the trends. I'm gonna show it to you. Cool kids, I know yeah. you've been busy. You haven't been on TikTok, <laughs> but I spend like eight hours on TikTok Great. per day. Done. Researching for work. Of course. Um, so let's let's talk about a couple of things. Okay. You are the nicest person in the world and Ditto. I know you won't say it out loud, like the nice things that you do. So I'm just going to showcase how nice okay. you are. A couple years ago, I got Bell's palsy, which is the thing that Justin Bieber has. Yeah. Crazy enough, where like your half your face is paralyzed. And you texted me out of the blue. And I'm like, this super famous person just texted me to make sure I'm okay. So like, we're like friends, friends, yeah, right? But absolutely. nobody knows. And you walk in today and the first thing's like, how are you doing? How's your health? And I'm like, oh, she cares about me. It's true. Oh my God. You're the nicest person thank ever. You, thank so I just want people to know that you are the nicest person thank ever. Um, and so when you come to do an interview, I don't get ex I don't I don't get nervous. I get excited. Oh, I'm like, oh, this yeah. is my favorite person. Or even after all these years of interviewing all these celebrities, I get nervous. I'm like, oh, what if I ask a stupid question and they hate me? When you come, I'm like, man, I just hope I don't embarrass her. Like us joking about something stupid, Never. you know? Like we were talking about your, your the whole foot situation you got yeah. going on with your shoes. I'm trying to figure out how to sit, guys. I know it's like a running joke. You said there's memes. Really tall... There are memes about my foot that I had never noticed. I wore these really tall heels. So should I do the same? That way no one can make fun of you. Like just sit like, oh, I just got a cramp. Never mind. That was a bad idea. Ah, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> All right. So you're you're back in your hometown. Talk to me. What's the first thing you do when you land back here in South Florida? I go to my mom's house. And um, actually, it was really sweet what happened this time. So I had, I've been on press tour for Purple Hearts. And we came straight from New York. We were doing press all day. And I walk into her house. And um, she had filled the place with purple balloons and purple flowers. And we watched Purple Hearts together for the first time. Like just us on Netflix. And that was really, really sweet. You guys watched it together? Yeah. Okay, because I'm glad you said that. Oh, she's like, oh boy, what is he going to ask now? Because I have a question here that uh -huh. I wanted to ask. And again, if you don't want this in the interview, I'll cut it. Sure. But let me phrase this in the most PG way possible. <laughs> when when you when a spicy scene, yeah. a spicy scene not that you do, scene, no, not the yeah, thank yeah. you, not it's the jalapeno. Spicy. I'm talking a spicy mm. scene where the co-host comes on and you're watching it with your family. Do you fast forward through it real quick? Do you like reach over and cover the eyes like your mom would do when you were a kid? Or do you just watch it and just cringe and like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I don't know if this is a weird or unorthodox answer, but I, um, I didn't do either. And I even think my, it wasn't weird for my mom either. And I think it's because, you know, because I was producer and so was she on the film. And I also worked, you know, so hands-on with my director, Liz, to make that scene super tasteful and more so mm -hmm. less like, spicy and more so yes. like intimate and like yes. vulnerable and like emotional. I think that's what, at least for me, comes across more. But when we were at the premiere, my sister was next to me and she was like, this is weird. You're my sister. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I feel like if I saw my little brother doing a scene like that, yeah. no matter what movie it was, sure. I'd be like, oh, I don't want to see this. Like, this is weird, yeah. you know? I mean, sure. There's definitely, I think, an element of that for sure. Okay. Yeah. That's it. I, uh, see, it yeah. wasn't that bad. No, no, no. Everybody in the room got nervous. I saw some puckering like, oh, what's he going to ask? It wasn't that bad. I was just curious because you're a movie star so I'm like I, I want to know all the behind the scenes stuff Yeah, because you're the only movie star friend I have you're so sweet I love it you keep saying movie star well because you are a movie star I love it so much so like I, I need to know behind the scenes stuff that yeah. happens like with the jalapeno scene did you guys actually use jalapenos oh, or were they yeah. fake it was real it was actually not even the jalapenos that were in that in that little container okay those are like mild like those were nothing our director god bless you Liz I love you <laughs> but she really fought for honesty in this film even when it came to this scene and she brought in a bag of like 50 kinds of jalapenos from I don't know where and me being really competitive I was like give me the hottest one I bet I can take it 
Well, it's also being Hispanic. We love spicy stuff. It was stuff. horrible, Frankie. Oh, it was? It was horrible. How many takes did you have to do with that? Scene? No, it was one because my literally I was my tongue was going to fall off. Like when wow. they called cut, I was like running. I needed emergency milk. Yep, like, that's I what was, it is. I that's was the crying. Trick. It was it was bad. <laughs> But it was a. It was a great scene in the it. movie, a very memorable one that I feel exactly. like. I don't know why that didn't start a challenge on TikTok where people try to eat jalapenos well, against each other. From your lips to God's ears, I'm sure it's gonna happen. Well, here's the thing: is there's a different trend from the movie, and we'll talk about all the like okay. getting to the movie. But yeah. like now, you're getting to other questions I got. Okay, sorry. sorry. So, so like on TikTok, yeah. there's a trend which I I don't know if you've seen it yet. Okay. And everybody wants to know. They they start. They're like me. Start when I first started watching uh, Purple Hearts. Me after, and it's the hair tucked in. <laughs> can you can you just explain the why on that? What was what was that? Because there's some conspiracy theories. Yes, some people are like, oh, it's because she was filming other stuff and her hair wasn't that long, so they tried to you know you know how they do like movie tricks to like hide it. No, it wasn't the- that. It was honestly. Well, yeah. Yeah, sorry. It was um a combination of things. You know, uh, uh it felt I felt really. <laughs> cool with it like that. Like I felt very Cassie and kind of cool. Like she kind of tucked her hair to get it out of her face. Okay. You know, like my hair is long and I feel like Cassie's kind of unbothered. You know, like she doesn't want her hair in her face. So I'd kind of just tuck it in my jacket. And it was a way of like me not having to think about it in a scene. And then Liz just really liked it. And it kind of became like the Cassie tuck. I really didn't think it was going to become as big of a thing as it is now. It's, I feel like it's going to be the new fall trend. Like everyone's going to wear a big jacket and they're going to tuck their hair. I do their, it myself. Their, like their, on my, uh, Sophia, I like tucking my hair. Um, yeah. <laughs> Has anybody else asked you that? Um, there's someone from my team okay. who keeps texting me like, Sophia, you need to look at these TikToks. Yes. You need to do one. They're hilarious. I didn't realize it was such a thing. They're hilarious. <laughs> it's like, I was just scrolling for hours of people like me before, honestly, me after, and it's the hair tucked in. I hadn't in. noticed how much of the movie I have it tucked in. It's, it's I a decent it with my mom and I was like, because <laughs> for me, it was like, it's easier. Let me just tuck it in my jacket. Yeah. And then every <laughs> scene ended up being tucked into my jacket. <laughs> I, look, I thought it looked but cool. It was, like it was nice. Yes. Fantasy, you know? So here's the thing. Maybe in like a decade or two, that's yeah. like a retro look. You I know what I mean? Yeah, and then yeah. everyone's like, oh, I'm doing the Sophia Carson. Doing no this. big oh, deal. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're putting that out yeah, there. We're manifesting it. it. All right. Look, for real though. Um, I try not to watch any interviews except for the Jimmy Fallon one because I'm like, my girl's on Jimmy Fallon. I got yeah. to watch it, right? But I, I wanted to hear all about the movie from you. Thank you. And I'll be honest with you. And I told you this earlier. I'm more of a... Uh, Gray Man yeah. on Netflix, John Wick, one, two, three, four, Action. Fast and Furious, like things gotta blow up John in movies. Wick, one, two, three, the, I think four. there's like four, is the four that coming down. Fast and Furious. Yeah, Fast and Furious, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I heard about this movie, I'm like, I'm gonna watch it because it's my girl, but it's not, I don't watch like romantic, sure. you know, dramas. And I watched it and there were points where I, uh, parts where I was like crying. I'm like, this movie's amazing. Thank I love this so much. You. And I'm not just saying that because it's you. I believe Because you're my you. friend. At this point, we're so close that I feel like I could tell you, hey, yo, Sophia, that ain't it. Yeah, you're that, like, that, so that ain't it, fam. That ain't well, it. No, but, <laughs> but this was it. This was really good. So give me the background, the story of how this all came together. Because it was like a lengthy process, yeah, right? Yeah, so I'm getting here. Go, oh, this, this is the part. All right, here we go. Back in the day, Back in the day. where it all started. So five years ago, I was shooting um, Pretty Little Liars, The Perfectionists in Portland. And I met my director, Liz Allen, who shot the first two episodes. And we just really connected. And, you know, we had spoken about wanting to work together again, as one does. And then a couple months later, um, it was Christmas time. And she came up to me on set and she handed me a script that said Purple Hearts. And it was a rough draft of our movie. And she said that she wanted to embark on this journey, not only as actor and director, but as partners and to produce it together. And five years later, you know, we developed the scripts, developed the characters, pitched the movie, cast the movie, you know, did everything to bring the film to life. Um, they trusted me to write the soundtrack for it. So I, I partnered with Justin Tranter, who's just an icon in the music industry to write the soundtrack. We wrote the soundtrack. We shot the movie. I became Cassie. And here we are. And it's been the most beautiful and fulfilling journey. You know, I poured so much of myself into this film. And before it had come out, I really had detached myself from success, if that makes any sense. It didn't matter to me what happened with the film. I was so proud of what we did. And to see the world fall in love with it has been just the most beautiful journey. I mean, it's not just the world falling in love with it. They 
freaking love it. Yeah. Isn't it like the most like streamed watched movie on Netflix right now? It is. Yeah. It's two weeks running, a uh, biggest movie on Netflix. And we found out this week that it's been watched over 150 million hours, which is 17,000 lifetimes. Okay. Can we yeah. get like a round of applause in the room? Cause that's just, <laughs> thank you. That's incredible. And Thank I'm sure your family's you. super proud of that, right? We are, yeah. I mean, I couldn't have done it without my mom and and it's just, it's does, a dream. Does your family ever hit you up? Like, I'm trying to get you more streams. I leave it playing all That's day. That's my mom does. <laughs> wow, we just busted her. She looks way, so embarrassed. On the way over here, she's like, I'm not going to watch another Netflix movie for at least another month and a half. She just leaves I it mean, on replay all I day. Like, I think I want to watch Grey Man. She's like, no. No? <laughs> Hey, Gray Man's fantastic. That's like, that was one of my favorite movies of the year until no, I saw Purple Heart. It's a great movie. Yeah, so good. It's a great movie. Well, now that you're in the Netflix family, can you like hop into Gray Man part two? I mean, sure. Why not? Hey, Ryan. <laughs> I feel like that's the next role for you. Like you did so amazing. I would love to do action. action. You did like a very really cool. good dramatic role. Thank you. So now I'm expecting you to be out there like action doing some, st- yeah, like jumping out of planes and onto cars and stuff. I'll take it. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Uh, please make it happen. And then if there's like a cameo of like a guy like handing you a muffin in a, in a scene, call your boy. That's, that's all I want. Muffin? Yeah, yeah, like, you know, like you're in like a Starbucks ordering something while you're like spying on somebody Done. in the movie. I'll just be the guy like, uh, Karen, your order. Here you go. <laughs> like, I'll just, just give me my two seconds of fame. Done. That's all I ask. For. Okay. I'll put it in my contract. Yeah, oh, my boy Frankie yes. has to have a cameo. Yes, thank you. Um, by the way, I saw you have the dog tag ring from the movie. Yeah. It was a TikTok. Um, what else did you steal from the set to remember it? That's actually it. You're lying. No, I'm not but lying. She doesn't want to get in trouble. That's no, no, the thing. I'm She's lying like, well, I don't want to. Because I actually did take more things, <laughs> but then I was asked to give it back. They called you and said, hey, so the car. The wardrobe department <laughs> was like, we need her. Co-. I took her her combat boot, not take, I borrowed. Her, her yeah, combat, just borrowed. to keep us in memory, yeah, her yeah, combat yeah. boots. Um, she had these shorts that she wore a lot and um, one of like Luke's military jackets. But um, they needed them. They asked for it back. Yeah. Okay, but so it's what- it's very common, I will say. It's very common practice or, in films. Or, or, or maybe they asked for it back because they're like, we're planning Purple Hearts too. So we need all the same wardrobe. Yeah, you don't know. That, that, that is actually why they keep everything. It's for continuity, like just in case. See, yeah. So that's how you know if they weren't going to do a part two, like, yeah, take whatever just you want. It. But now like, no, no, we need to keep it for the next one just in case. Um, Let's talk about the song real quick. So yeah. we've been playing it for a couple of days now Thank on Y100. You so much. It's super exciting. It is. We love hearing you on Y100. Thank Tell you. Tell me a little bit about like writing the songs for the movie. It was um, one of the scariest and most beautiful experiences of my life. I had never written a soundtrack before. And that sounded like a really scary venture. And before I was like, mom, like who, who thought that I could like... Who, who, who said that I could do this? So scared. Luckily, I had an incredible partner in Justin and the team that he put together. And I had also, you know, I had lived with Cassie for four years. I had lived with this woman. I had dreamed of her. I had created her. I had created this love in my mind. And so kind of going into the studio was really cathartic because it was like, I think, the beginning of me becoming her. And it was similar to when I wrote my album that I had to kind of dive into the depths of my heart to bring these songs to life. I had to dive into Cassie in order to sing her voice and to bring it to life. And it was really, really beautiful. We wrote everything in a week. Um, it was a whirlwind. And um, now the soundtrack has gone viral. Come Back Home has gone viral. Um, it's being played in radio stations like Y100. It's like number eight global viral on Spotify. And I don't know how many billions of TikToks. It's, um, it's wild. It's so beautiful. It's really exciting. Hey, we love hearing your Y100. So, um, Thank you. I that, grew up listening to Y100 every single morning. I did too. That's so, why like, I get excited. I feel like so that's why you come back. You don't come for me. You come because, oh, it's Y100. Oh. I remember winning tickets on Y100 back in the day. Literally to go to the Jingle Ball. <laughs> you want Jingle Ball tickets to this? I won, but we went to you the went. Jingle Ball. Yeah. Not Just the ones where I've seen you at Jingle Ball where no, I'm like no, sweaty and working like outside. Us as a fan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to come to this year's Jingle Ball? I would love to. Is this Let's like, make it happen. can I make this the formal invitation? So now if you don't show up, I'm going to look real bad. This is the formal invitation. This is the I'll formal invitation. There. Now let's just hope we don't cancel it like we did last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. I got some fan questions I want to ask you. Okay, cool. Because I could sit here and talk to you all day. We could catch up on like everything. Yeah. Uh, we could talk about Ozark. Like, you know us. We yeah. could sit here and chat. But I want to ask the fan questions because a lot of times fans will send you stuff on Twitter, but you're so busy. And I see you try to I answer do, people yeah. back as much as possible. So these are my favorite questions that okay. I got from fans. Um, would you like to have tattoos like Cassie? No. You're not a tattoo I'm person. I'm not a tattoo person. Why not? I never have been. And my sister's been trying to convince me for literal I'm like, decades. I'm like just quietly hiding yeah, my no, no, tattoos. No, no. I'm oh, like, no, no. wow, she tats. hates tattoos. I'm just- No, I love tats on other people. And I love them for Cassie. But I actually never case. wanted- Yeah, no, I, think, no I was about to comment. They're so cool. <laughs> Thank you. I've never wanted one myself. Oh, well, then I can ask you the next question. Okay, which what? was your favorite tattoo that Cassie had? Oh, no, I can ask you because okay. I picked them all. Um, did you? I did. I picked each one. Each one had a specific meaning to them. 
My favorite one, I think might be the butterflies coming up her her okay. arm. My mom has always called me her butterfly. And I always felt that even though Cassie and I were very different, we were very similar in that we were both dreamers and that I felt that Cassie was also like a butterfly. And also I learned that the butterfly is a symbol of immigration and Cassie stands for you know, social justice issues, the daughter of an immigrant. And that was really important to her. Uh, by the way, I love that you guys added that into the movie. I don't know if it was part of yeah. like the original script or you guys added that, but I love that because that's something like that my family went through as well. Like I'm Mexican, you know sure. what I mean? So for us, that's a big deal. I got like cousins and family mm-hmm. that's trying to move here that at one time trying to whatever. So that was cool that you mentioned that. That's a lot. It's good representation, Thank you, you know? That's what we wanted Cassie to be. I knew she was going to mean a lot to a lot of people and she's just fueled by this passion for justice. So um, a lot of actually those lines I improvised. Oh, see, yeah. I'm telling you, movie star, <laughs> movie star. Uh, what songs from Purple Heart was the hardest, the toughest to record? The tough, uh, the toughest one to write was Come Back Home. We had to write almost two, I think three different versions until we got to the one that was the one. And I think it's because it was such a pivotal song for the movie and we had such a pressure, or at least I had such a pressure on myself to bring that song to life. Um, but when we did find it we knew that it was the one so that was the hardest one the hardest one to record honestly you know in tapping into Cassie I think I tapped into a side of my voice I hadn't tapped into before because she's very like she's an indie rock and roll artist and I hit some notes in a way that I never had before which was really cool and hate the way it was like a it was a belter like a very rock and roll belter and it was really fun to do that and same with I didn't know I didn't know is definitely a, a challenging and emotional song three things you have in common with Cassie um, her love of music, her love of her family and her respect of her mom. And I would say um, her tenacity. Favorite Cassie outfit. And I'll tell you mine. And this is not like the best scene, but you know when she's like on stage and like it's hitting her that she needs insulin, like yeah. right before that pivotal moment. That was your favorite outfit? That outfit was like the white with where she was on the stool. White. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, that's a dope outfit. Like yeah, if I could cool. wear something like that, I would wear that. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> um... I think tied between two. I think the first outfit that we meet her in, in that cool fringe jacket, to me is very Cassie and the, her t-shirt. And then my second is the outfit that she wore to perform at Oceanside, that black kind of cool rock and roll um, look. I really like that look too. All the looks were great, Thank by you. the way. They were all guys. So that's why like, I knew this was going to be a hard question. Yeah. You're like, man, they're all so great. I Thank tried to you. steal all the outfits. <laughs> Toughest scene to film in Purple Hearts. That's tough because it was a really emotional film, Mm -hmm. challenging film for us and for Nick and I. Um, Yeah, it was every day was really emotional. I would say our most challenging scene was their big blowout argument when Cassie finds out about Jono and, you know, him threatening her mom and then Cassie essentially leaving him. I think we had been kind of leading up to that scene in our minds since the day that we met. So it was a a difficult one for us to get through and also just an emotional one. And I think this one wasn't difficult because weirdly it was so easy for us to get to that place, but it was a really emotional scene. And it was actually meant to be much longer than it is in the movie, but it was the last scene we shot of the entire film. And it's when Cassie has her low blood sugar attack and she gets home after seeing her mom and she almost faints. And like Nick is, Luke is afraid of losing her. That was like a really, really emotional couple. We just spent like five hours just like crying and like holding each other on the couch because we were like so in it. Okay, I know nobody cares. We want to know what the hardest scene to watch for me was. Thank you. When you hand over the ring, oh. after, bro, Riley. I was bawling. I'm like, oh yeah, my God, I hope, I'm glad no one's watching me right now watch this movie because yeah. they're just going to see me like... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That one was tough. Yo, that props was tough. to you. The thing is, that's when it comes to movies like that, when you can make it believable, that's when people start crying. Thank and they're you. like, oh my God, like I felt that's, everything that's happening in this scene. That's all I could ever want. Thank you. Uh, do you actually like breakfast tacos with a lot of hot sauce? Nope. <laughs> really? I've actually never had a breakfast taco and I don't really like hot sauce. Can we get her a breakfast taco, please? <laughs> now I'm insult The Mexican in me is like, what do you mean you've I never had a crazy. breakfast taco? I've never had a breakfast burrito or a breakfast taco, but I love breakfast and I love tacos. So I'm probably going to love it. Yeah, you need exactly. it together. You need it together. Uh, what was your reaction the first time you watched Purple Hearts? First time, so, because I'm because i producer, I watched, you know, a couple cuts of it, but I refused to watch the final color-corrected, scored movie until the premiere. So it had been a couple of months since I had seen the last version and I wanted to watch it for the first time with my mom and my sister and it was in a big screen. And I, I remember for the first like 20 minutes, I couldn't believe what I was watching 
and I, and I'm just talking about the the Liz's direction, the scope of the film, the, the score was so beautiful. And it was like, you know, five years of dreaming of this and watching it on a screen was really, really beautiful. It was emotional. My mom says that she, I think she blacked out for like the first 30 minutes of the movie. And I think I did too. Like just like shocked at how I good it was. You're like, like emotion this is amazing. and shock. And it was just, yeah, it was really special. I got like three more for you. Okay. Uh, biggest challenge taken on this role. And you talked about a lot so of similarities many. between you and Cassie and you put a lot of you into it. Cassie, my biggest challenge, and it wasn't producing, it wasn't even writing the soundtrack because once we got in the room, we did it. It was really becoming Cassie and that's what scared me the most because I knew that it was, first of all, my, my biggest role to date as an actor. And I knew that she was going to mean a lot to a lot of people and that her story was beautiful, but it was really complex and layered. And Cassie is a person... And her mannerisms and her instincts are very different than Sophia. So I had to like completely lose myself to be her and almost surrender. And, and all I wanted was to be able to tell it with complete honesty. And it was terrifying until my director said, so you have to embrace the fear. And I did. And I think that's what allowed me to, to kind of let go and become Cassie. And it was so beautiful to feel so connected to another person for a couple of months. And it was interesting because like I started to kind of see the world through her eyes and what made her angry made me angry. And like, sometimes I couldn't stand to be around Nick because it was Luke. Like it was just really interesting. <laughs> yeah. You're, are you a little bit of like a method actor? So where you kinda... We kind of discovered that I might be okay. a little bit. I haven't okay. studied method acting, but they're on the days, which were a lot of the days where Cassie couldn't stand Luke. Like I frankly could not be around oh. Nick on set. Did he take that personally or he's like, oh my I God, she hates me. In the beginning, in the beginning, he was like, I think this girl doesn't like me. But I was never me, but it was just like, I would, I would ask him for space because like Cassie wouldn't be around Luke. So I, I don't know. It was just like, yeah, I was very connected uh, to her emotions. I'm trying to think. There's an actor that does this where, where <laughs> he'll get into character and never get... Oh, uh, oh yeah, no. Leto, Jared, and Jared Leto. Matt, Jared Leto. They'll get in character. Daniel Day-Lewis, too. And they'll just annoy everybody on set because they're never going to... It's like, dude, we get it. You're the Joker. No, like, I definitely was Stop sending me weird stuff in the mail, bro. Like, yeah, you're being I've heard, weird. I've heard that takes commitment. No, I definitely haven't gotten into that. Maybe on the next movie. Who knows? <laughs> Um, this was a great question that somebody put. It was my favorite one. Okay. And I felt like I keep forgetting to do this when I sit down with, with movie stars. Um, what's your favorite thing to talk about? Because you do all these press tours and everyone's asking you the same questions. I call it housekeeping. Like we got to ask you about the movie. Yeah. ask you about the song. We got to ask you about a tour and all that. But what's something you wish someone would ask you about that you could just talk about? Whether it's the um, Grammy thing that you did? Yeah. Or you have a scholarship? Or, yeah. I mean, who knows? There could be a million other things that you want to, we could talk about Ozark. I mean, if that's really something that you're that's like, yeah. Great question. What's something you would love to just like talk about in an interview that never gets asked? I, I don't know if I've been lucky, but I get asked about almost everything that I like talking about. I mean, I love talking about UNICEF and my advocacy work and the Latin Grammy Foundation. I love talking about my family, but I always find a way of putting them into every conversation, like my mom and my sister. Joey, Joey. I should be asked more about Joey. What, what do you That's want people right to ask answer. you about Joey? Okay. Uh, just Joey. Joey is the light of our life and Joey is just the cutest person in the world. Okay, how about this? You have you have 60 seconds to say everything okay. you want to say about Joey, Joey. and go. Okay, jo I haven't seen him in a month and I miss him so much and he is just the cutest, fluffiest, most beautiful fluff ball in the world and he's in LA right now with my sister. And um, you know, it was something really cute that happened the day that my album came out. My sister dressed him up in a tux. <laughs> and when I woke up, Joey was in a tux. That's, that's cute. All. That's pretty cute. That's, it. that's all she wants. <laughs> See? And now you let it all out. You're that's like, that's it. I've, I've done everything I needed yeah. to do in every interview. No more interviews. We're all good. We're good. I can go on vacation now. Do you get to vacation? Because you've been working like crazy. You know, not, not, I'm good though. I really. She's like, I went, it's just, blink twice yeah, if you need yeah. a vacation, please. Like, <laughs> if you need help, let us know now. No, I, I probably won't for a bit because it's, you know, it's been so beautifully crazy, but um, I love working. You know me. When you love what you do, it's, it's not really It's so working. true. Cliche, it's like, but true. Yeah. And, you know, don't get me wrong. The exhaustion comes and everything, but I really do. I love what I do. And we love what you do. Thank so you. last question. And this is a personal one. Okay. Because we were texting back and forth and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't see this message from like I'm three so months sad. ago. And I'm like, And you well, know that's not me. Well, hold on. 
I just, I didn't want to be the guy to, to send, double to double text. So I wanted to ask, is a double text, does that give you the ick in anybody? Like, like no. let's say you're talking to a guy and he hits you with a double text. No. So you're like, ew, I don't I mean, want to talk to I mean, it depends on the guy. But I would say no, not necessarily. I feel like if a guy double texts, I'm like, oh, this guy's really interested. Or if I'm not into him, I'm like, okay. For the record, I just wanted to let her know that Ozark season two was out. And that we, was the text. The text that was like, it. Ozark season two is out. Because we text about Ozark. By the way, I still haven't finished it. And it's not season two, it's like season four. The it's final. the day, the, 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 the end. No, I haven't seen it. I haven't, I haven't finished it. Are you working for Netflix and you haven't seen that? Do they know that? Now they're going to get mad now at you. Now they know. Now, now they know. Now, they know. Oh, now they're not going to put you in Gray Man too. But you know, shh, don't say that. <laughs> hey, Ryan. <laughs> um, I'm going to watch it tonight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I um, It was really dark. Like it got really yeah. dark. Yeah. So I had to like take a break. I get like that with uh, but Black it's Mirror. Fantastic. I haven't been able to finish Black Mirror either. What season Did you are watch you on? Made on Netflix? Highly recommend. Not yet. Highly but yes, I do want to watch. Highly I do want to watch that. Yeah. Anatomy of a Scandal too is really um, good. Yeah, for me, what I found, the way I can get through Black Mirror is if I watch an episode that really kind of disturbs me, um, I'll start watching Spider-Man, like the cartoon Spider-Man right after. Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I got to watch like a kid's show for like <laughs> an hour. Is I watch Gilmore Girls. Oh, that like, works. Right after and it kind of just like makes everything nice and- Fun fact, fun Lorelai fact. Gilmore is our age and now I feel old. I saw that the other day. L- Lorelai, that's her name, right? She's 30? She's 29? Yes. yes. In the, in, Gilmore? In, the, in the show, she's like 30 something, like 30 what? Exactly. When I saw that, I'm like, wow. That's it. We're old. That's it. No wonder Gen Z makes fun of us. We're basically boomers to them. <laughs> Just FYI. <laughs> and with that being said, uh, Sophia Carson, thank you so much for I stopping by. Frankie. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Um, I'm so glad after all these years, you got to come by and hang out. And now I have a surprise for you that we're going to do. What, do you, wanna, you want me to reveal the surprise right now? Reveal it. So me and Sophia Carson talked about redoing, recreating a scene from Purple Hearts. Yes. So I wrote out the script from the scene. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thais, can you do me a favor? Can you grab the thing and just hand it to me right here? I'm scared. In the In the box, in the box, in the box. You'll see it. As soon as you open it, you'll know what I'm talking about. She's like, what is you going to hand me like a giant lizard or something? Yeah, that's it. So we decided that we're going to do a scene together. So I already wrote the script out. Okay. I picked the diner scene. Okay. Like the early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I don't want to do any spoilers. When she sees Frankie for the first time. No, 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 no. Diner, diner, oh, diner. Diners. Like where they're, Me they're too. like, they're like, yes. Okay. Okay. Good scene. So we decided we're going to do a scene together, but I'm going to play you <laughs> and you're going to play Luke. I'm so ready. This is amazing. Shut <laughs> And just before you clown my wig, this is the only wig that Party City had. So it's not movie accurate. Frankie, but I love you so Here, hold on. Much. Let me try to- You got to tuck your on. hair in your shirt too hold to on, make it on. super accurate. Now that we finished the interview, I don't mind messing up my hair because- Hold on. Here you go. Frankie. And now you got to tuck it. Tuck Does it look good? Yeah, it looks great. Now let's tuck you it fix in your shirt. Yeah, but is it centered? It's centered. This one has bangs. Yeah, so you gotta like, have bangs. I know, it's okay. but that's why I said. Cassie almost had bangs. What I'm trying to tell you is this is the only wig they had at Party Wait, City. Come a little closer. Okay. <laughs> How do I look? Gorgeous. Honestly. Close? Could I be like your stunt double? The thing is, we have like similar eyes and like similar coloring, so it kind of does look like Cassie. Wait, well, no, she's kind of like badass. So she yeah, yeah. just sits like. Exactly. Cassie, what's up? Okay. Are you ready to do the scene then? I'm so ready. Okay, let's do it. 